Welcome back to the show, everybody. Hopefully, uh, everybody's having a wonderful day today. It is 647 here on the East Coast. Let me uh, make this thing bigger. We're going to have a little bit. It's going to be a lot different than what you would normally see. So I'm going to spin the camera around. We're actually going to be building something. And uh, we're going to be building a barricade stop. And also, we are going to be building basically a bag rider combined all together. I went to Lowe's. Let me go and grab this stuff real quick. And some of the other parts and pieces. So here's a bag rider. This is basically by Area 419. And then I got a piece of, I think this is, it's eighth by three inch, by three feet. I think this was 19 bucks. Let me give you guys the prices. So my plan is today is to have some fun and uh, see how it turns out. I've been having some issues. I like pushing into the barricade uh, maybe too much, but I'm ending up basically manipulating that mag a little bit, and I'm having some issues feeding the rounds every once in a while. So what I did was, and this may work, may not work. It's 50 bucks. It's uh, 53.67, but I bought a, that flat steel was 19.99, and then I bought some Dremel tool stuff. So I need to cut. There's going to be cutting going on. I want to be heating metal up and beating it down. So just a fair warning: <laughs> um, make sure you're not wearing head, you know, earbuds or anything, because there will be parts where it gets loud. I'll try to remember to hit the microphone and cut it off. And then here's what I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, barreled action out of the chassis. And I'm going to try to run these screws basically coming down the chassis and into the metal. So this will be kind of a permanent, permanently mounted to see if it works. Now, yesterday I was having a little bit of fun. What did I do with that old one? Um, I built this. So this was a, it actually works really well. The problem is. I, I mounted it with the Area 419 um, ARCA clamp on the top. The problem is this height right here. So there's about a half inch. So when you go to hit the uh, over here, when you go to utilize this bag, this is the tater tot. When you come in and mount the rifle, what's nice is it's really protecting the mag. I don't have to worry about the mag getting hit at all. Um, but I don't like, I mean, I could round the corners. I don't like the height difference. Now, it's not a big deal. This would work perfectly fine. But I figured, why the heck not try something different? So if you guys, <laughs> you use stuff you got around the house, especially when it was late at night last night. And uh, this was originally, you guys can see that for tile. So this was a. It was, it was like this, but it didn't have that bend in there, and then there was a bend there, but basically you hammer the, to make the tile go in. But before we get started, let's see who's out there. We got Snake Man 40, 48 in first place, Carcane Brody, Brody's out there. We got Commando 97. I saw a gentleman with a $15 bag rider made out of cutting board and an Arca mount. There you go. See? <clears throat> The reason why I'm not a huge fan, I don't like running one of these. I feel like it's too big. So in my mind, and depending on if you're running like a really, this one's not, but if you're running like a really packed bag, um, when you put this down, there really is no give. So if that barricade, let's just say the barricade's like this, you're really trying to fight it to hold your rifle up to get it to you know to get flat again right so that would be that would be where it needs to go or pretty close to level so you're fighting it so i liked how the my rifle was thinner than this i felt like i could move the rifle around a little bit and fight it less and get a better it would it would go into the bag a little bit better now figuring that i needed to build a barricade i've already kind of got my design here you can see those wax. Uh, that's a black wax pencil. 
basically this is the part that's going to be hanging down protecting the mag and then up here i want it this long so i would say a good good majority of the time i'm just running a bag or a bipod there's uh times when this may be this may hamper my progress of a stage so building this keeping in mind that i'm not running it where i can take it off quickly so i'm not running this mount and the reason why i don't want to run the mount is i want this completely flush up against the rifle so that i can put it right on the bag and it's it'd be just like my normal rifle um but it'd be a little bit wider so i'll get a little more stable but also not have to fight the bag too much now i do have the microphone over there so hopefully you guys can hear me I'm going to actually turn the camera around and we're going to do some construction. First thing I need to do is take it out of the chassis. And uh, hopefully YouTube knows that it's just a piece of aluminum. It is no longer, you know, it does not um, impact any of their rules. They're probably, they'll probably still bust me, but uh, they shouldn't because I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm doing exactly what they have uh, for their rules and obligations as a YouTube video content creator. Let's see, we got Commando 97 out there. Uh, Sean Downey. Mr. Uh, 2A Refugee, late from work. Warsaw Patriot, Michael Mink. Skunk Apes out there. Oh, Michael Mink changed his name to Michael Mink. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Mano 018's out there. Sig Boy. Between you and Ray, a lot of practical information being supplied it is appreciated. Uh, appreciate it, Sig Boy. Yeah, Ray's done a really good job of putting out good videos for the beginner PRS shooter. We got Wes M out there lately, six rudders. Waddy's out there. The Outlaw Josie Wells, Brian T. Drew Bradley. Skunk Apes out there. So there will be times, just a fair warning. This is going to be a long, just kind of a a BS session. I'm going to be working. I'm going to, I got the TV over there. I'm going to be looking at the comments and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about what you guys thoughts are on having a barricade stop. I will say the reasons for me doing this is I want to see if I can go through a whole match without having one mag issue. So having, let's pretend this is, I guess I got one right here. This is totally the wrong one, but uh, I got a mag here. I can really push into the barricade and not have to worry about influencing my mag a little bit, which as I go to rack the next one, it's not picking it up correctly and it's nose diving in. So between, uh, I will say that my other one with the 90 degree, um, they both have, it's both the same chassis. They're both an MPA matrix. They both have an adjustable mag. Uh, but for some reason I cannot get that one perfect. So there is times the other one, the 90 degree one over there on the wall. Um, it's right up there. I think, yeah. Um, works flawlessly. So I'm going to try this out. I don't know if it'll work. It's just going to be fun. It's going to be me screwing off. You guys are more than welcome to come in, come out, check up on me once in a while. What's up, Plus Five? Or you can stick around and watch the madness. I'm gonna be using uh, I'm gonna be using blow torches <laughs> from the EP uh, my annealer. So just to heat up the metal, bend it over, and and then I'm gonna be doing some uh, later on. I'm gonna be doing some trimming around, getting better shape. But before I do that. I need to actually, I don't even need to worry about the chassis as of yet. Once I get to the part where I'm going to need to drill the holes. So if you guys just showing up, so this is what I basically have planned in my head. So unfortunately these are aluminum, but the chassis is aluminum too. So it should be kind of fine. So in the chassis, there's plenty of holes underneath. They're usually set up for a barricade stop where you just kind of click it in. Um, but I'm going to be running these down through the chassis so the action in the barrel should be clear. And then this is going to come up through where I will where I will drop stuff on the ground. 
Now, I dropped my rifle yesterday. I had it set up on, uh, I was messing with this barricade thing. And I said, oh, I'll put it up against the chair. And that full rifle just went bam. So the <laughs> I would assume the zero is good, but I got to take it apart anyway. So now's a good time to build this. That's the reason why I, after work I came and uh, decided to build this. Because at this point, I may have shifted something around, whatever the case is, but it won't really matter because I'm going to be taking the chassis out anyways. So let's have some fun. Let's get uh, let's get going. Got the Shaggy Rockman out there. <clears throat> Doug B. Joaquin Jack Nava. Yeah, listening mode. There you go. John Rollins. You guys are all awesome. Plus five. I am going to turn around. I'm going this way. We're going to have some fun. And I got two T's ready for today's adventure. So you know this is going to be a long video, guys. So if you got stuff to do, come in. Say hi. If you got stuff to do, you're not going to hurt my feelings. But we are going to be over here. We're going to be over here. So first thing I plan on doing is I plan on doing some bending. I might have to do some cutting with the Dremel tool. And let me turn the camera out of the uh, thing over here so I can read your comments. No, he was out there. I'll scrape the whole setup, start over. Once dropped, it will never be the same. <laughs> All right, so first thing I got to do is I got to find, I'm probably, I'm not going to cut this yet if I can, if I got clearance, because I may need to make it longer or shorter. So right there, it's going to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that up. I'm going to, hopefully I got my 90 degree level around here somewhere and a square basically. And then I'm going to bend this and then we should have some fun. So we'll see. We'll see if I can catch the house on fire. I'm going to go over here real quick. I apologize for not being on camera, but I can't have everything. So. I got, I got this. Hopefully you guys can see. I got the big old microphone in the way. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. And this is a handle from. What else we got in the way here? Get this out of the way. Drink this one for now. You got this, brother. That's right, MacGyver style. I've always been decent at building crap. And I do use the word crap because sometimes it does turn into crap, but sometimes it works out pretty well. Let's see what I got that I could use for a square real quick. Gotta be something around here. Now in high school, I used to work in a muffler shop. And I used to do a lot of welding, a lot of oxygen selling, uh, cutting kind of stuff. So... This should be pretty easy. I'm going to use this as my <laughs> use this as my square. What do you guys think? Does that look great? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Crap. I need a lighter. Do I have a lighter? I probably don't. I'm probably going to have to run upstairs real quick. Anybody got a lighter in their pocket I can borrow? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Come on. Got to be a lighter around here somewhere. Maybe not. Well, hell. All right, I guess I'm going to have to come back. Hmm. Not a very good firefighter, am I? All right, I apologize. I'll be back in a second. Two shakes of a lamb's tail.
motion detected in the front yard. Here, Mary Tackers is out there. Quick, everybody. <laughs> Bit this silver because it's not very big, but I'm hoping to get a better, more of a rounded, uh, it's a better looking angle here than just a straight up 90. Let's say now get hot like an assembly torch. You guys don't know I got a dehumidifier the other last week, and it's been helping out a lot. So we're just heating this thing up, trying to go slow. I'd go faster if there's more heat to this damn thing. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Trust me, I'm a fireman. <laughs> oh, we got an LMB Pro out there. What's up, Alan? Trying to catch the house on fire, Alan. Got Robert Warren out there. What? Rick trying to burn that himself. Yeah, pretty much. You guys are just showing up. I'm making a bag. I'm making a bag rider slash barricade stop for a rifle.
Alright. So we'll let that cool off. See what everybody's saying. The advice makes a good heat sink. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I just got my answer. What was the answer, Brian? Oh. Razor JB's out there. What's going on, Mr. Razor JB? Rick, you building runners for a dog sled? <laughs> it kind of looks like it, huh? Alright, so we're right at 90, we got to let this cool a little bit, and then it's going to be fun time. So, this is going to be the mag right here, well I could do this, so right here is basically the trigger, the mag would be here, and my bag, which is over there, is going to be right here. So this thing's going to be cut at this height right here, yeah, the camera's working good. Um, so that'll be the line. I'm going to cut that. And then if you had seen what I was talking about earlier, basically hoping that this works out pretty well. And if not, it's not a big deal. It's a fun project for the day. We'll see how it works. Now, I know I'm going to make some noise here in a little bit, which is probably going to suck. So I might, might use the uh, – let me go over here real quick. I might use the mute button to save you guys the, the heartache. Normally, the good old days when I had lots of the shop equipment, this would have been super easy. But I got I to gotta cut metal with a Dremel. I do have a pair of safety glasses around here because... These little discs, they definitely explode if you screw up. And unfortunately, we don't want to do that. We want to keep our eyesight. Eyesight's always good. So, I did pick these up at Lowe's. Some new easy lock crap I've never used before. So, we'll try those out. Uh, let's see here. Looks simple enough. Maybe not. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Push and turn kind of deal, maybe. We shall see. All right, so on this one, looks like you got to pull down on the collar. Turn. Oh, that's pretty slick. That is pretty slick. I really should find my wrench so that the whole damn thing doesn't go flying off in the end of space. And I need to find my eyes. Here's the eyes. So there's half of it. What else do we need? Oh, guess what? I just found the lighter over there. Dang it, Bobby. All right. Let's see here. See this cooled off a little bit. Nice and warm. Where is the dang tools? All right, so we're going to go without it. Hopefully, maybe this is the right size. Let's see if this is the right size here. Oh, looky there. Well, I used all my left for the week. So, put no... Put no if it's too damn loud, and put yes if it's okay. If it's a bunch of no's, I will, uh, I will um, mute mute the uh, the cutting section. Here we go. Oh, let me clamp this back down in here. I think this will work. It's only eighth inch steel, so it shouldn't be too long. Oh, we got 
Doug. Rick making auto sear. <laughs> no, I don't know how. Let's see. Yes, it's too loud. No, you're still talking. <laughs> you guys are confusing me. All right, it's too loud, but uh, yes, it's too loud. I got one yes. I think that's how I asked it earlier. You know what? I'll just I'll just mute the damn thing. I think it's muted. Quick attacks things suck <laughs> because it disconnected from. So, this is a good test of. Uh, so, this is a little quarter turn, quick, quick attach BS. They suck. So, there's one blade down the crapper. Let's try another one. Alright, see if I can do a better job here. going to be at this forever. <laughs> when are you going to finish putting in the ceiling? I'm not. I got disappointed and pissed off because when my thing flooded, can you even hear me? I don't know if I'm even on. Yeah. I uh, After I flooded out, I was a little uh, upset at all the progress and then it halted. So I kind of been uh, kind of been down in dumps when it comes to uh, Getting my stuff completed, I guess. And you know what? I've been, uh, some of you guys may know, maybe you noticed it. I'm having some issues. I'm not shooting as good as I wish I was. I'm sure everybody could probably say that. But uh, I think I'm getting a little, I think I'm getting a little bummed out about my, uh, my showing. In the last few matches, so I, you've been seeing less of me. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and scar this, and then uh, that's still warm, and then bend it back and forth and just call it done, and then I'll I'll break it off. Uh, 
Oh, that crazy nut straight cut. That's what it should look like. <clears throat> That's what it is. <laughs> so, acetylene torch. That's the way to cut metal. Not this damn little cheesy project Dremel tool. But that's what I got, so I'm going to use it. So now, let me get my uh, famous YouTube friendly. Oh, actually, where's that? Yeah, here we go. I don't know if I should put it on the bug assault or not, because YouTube is kind of a tool. Basically, what I'm trying to do is so here's the tater top. Here's the rifle, the YouTube rifle, right? Problem is, let's just pretend this is a magazine. When I load, when I load my rifle, can you see this? I can't the mag back just a little bit. I'm over exaggerating everything so you can notice. Then I have feeding issues. So the plan of attack today is to basically mount this like this. And when I go to go on a barricade, it's going to hit here. And the mag is going to be back here. And I won't have to worry about anything. So that is the plan. There'll be a little bit of shape to it, and uh, you can kind of see it a little bit. But I figured I'd have some fun today. You can see the lines there if I'm in the right lighting. And then up on top, you can see I did a horrible job of cutting. No, it's Rick. Uh, let's see. Skis for gnomes. <laughs> yeah, those are the little guys. Actually, I got a little Elmo. I put, put him on here. Let's see. What else is out there? Two more months, two more months of day, sir. Rick's making an invention. Yep, no, it's Rick. A Jamaican bobsled rail. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> uh, I love hearing from you guys. You make it fun, I'm telling you. You make it fun. You make it exciting. So we got, we got this disaster going here. So now that this is cut, all the cleanup and cleaning around the edges and blah, blah, blah. This is where YouTube's gonna have a crap fit, I bet. I'm gonna go down there, take the action out of a chassis YouTube. It's a, called a piece of metal. It does nothing, it's kinda like this piece right here. It's just a piece of metal. Uh, there's been times I, I keep, I keep uh, telling them that Basically, it's a piece of metal because they've shut me off before for showing just a chassis alone. Didn't break any of the guidelines or the rules, but uh, they had a huge issue with it. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt it again. I'm using the Borka, the Borka tool set. Yes, you can get these over at actually Customs. And I'm going to go ahead and Take this off, it'll only take two seconds. And then we'll have a chassis. And hopefully YouTube, what would be cool is if YouTube, unfortunately it's an algorithm, I think. So it's just some stupid robot looking at us. Let me make sure this is the right size. That's it. But we'll see if, uh, if I go this way, and you guys, I got a, it's a, it's a shit sandwich down here. I got so much crap everywhere. Okay, down there is the thing we're talking about. We'll see if YouTube will leave me alone. So I'm taking out the two action screws. back in.
or not. Get your ass in there. Okay. So now I got this. So what I can do is, I think I can take part of this apart so it doesn't look like anything. And that might help. Might keep you two from uh, getting crazy. Let's see if that'll work. And just a fair warning, guys. Where the hell's my every time? Mm. I'm missing. I'm missing one. This is now. So this is, I'm off the uh, camera because it's probably smart for right this second. And I'm almost done. Almost done, 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 done. One more screw, bolt, thingamajiggy. Okay. If you guys want to make a million bucks, make a matrix chassis, the rear of the stock, that doesn't weigh freaking 3 pounds 7 ounces by itself. 3 pounds 7 ounces. Not good when you're shooting rim fire stuff. It's a little too much weight. The booty is big in the back. All right, let me put all this stuff away so I don't lose it. Because that would suck. All right, I'll put it. I'm going to ask you guys where I put this later. So put it over here. All right. Now this doesn't look so scary anymore. I don't think this is just a, uh, you know, it's a piece of metal. You guys will see that I have built basically when it's on the bag, I use it. I use it like this to squeeze the bag. And that uh, seems to help me stabilize or if I need to can it one way or the other to get a nice level level uh, area. So here's the holes I was talking about. What we are going to do now is mount or figure out where this is going to go exactly. So you're going to see that. Kind of trying to hide. Uh, let me see if I can find some tape or something. Some tape. I know there's some right in this crappy mess of disaster. I just had black tape yesterday here. Where is it? Aha. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit of taping so that the algorithm, <laughs> what else can I do to make this thing look uh, less scary? Um, 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 whatever. Hopefully we, hopefully we're good. But now there's no, it's just a piece of metal YouTube. But here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan anyways. The plan is this is going to mount like this. We're going to have clearance for the mag. So we need to make sure that that happens. One of the things you'll see is. There is the uh, the screw to hold the action. Okay, so this can't be blocked. So it's either I figure out a way to drill a hole through it, which may be super close. Where's the bag with all my mags? So here's the longest mag that Voodoo makes. This is a 12 rounder. So I need to stay off of that like that. So remember, there's a lot of work that's going to have to take place still. But I need to be, I would rather be like this, have a hole, 
and go through the action, but I don't think that's going to work. Remember, this is going to be trimmed up and all that kind of stuff. We're dealing with raw, raw metal, heavy metal right now. So I'm going to be able to mark the holes. You're going to see this is what the plan is. This is what my plan was at Lowe's anyways. So I bought different heights of these. Height, heights? Different height of these. And let's check this one. So I need one that's basically flush to the thickness of the chassis. So that is looking pretty close. You can see that it's barely protruding out. Now that was the, the 3 8 post. I do have some 3 16 which may work. Let's see which one works the best. I bought four of each. But there's a there's plenty of room down there where the weights would be. You can see a weight right there. There's one that's put in. So that one, I wish there was one in between those two. You can kind of see it. It's a horrible picture. I apologize. But that's, this is going to go through the metal. This is going to tighten it in. So there's going to be like probably three of these along here. And then it's nice and flush. It's nice and flush where you will not have much hitting your bag. You don't have to worry about it cutting a hole in it and some of that sort. So we'll see if it works. That's the plan. And, of course, there's always plan A, plan B and so on so we'll see what happens i think this one's going to be the winner but what i'll do is i'll countersink i'll countersink the actual plate so that that'll protrude through a little bit and then it'll be a nice flush hole so let me get a let me get a good zero meaning let me get over here and mark these and then we'll drill some holes Let's see Let's see what happens. All right. So it looks like that'll fit in there. Crappy part is that action screw. So I need to either drill a big hole so I can actually take the action out. Because once this is mounted in, and if I can't get to the action screw, it's going to suck. Because I won't be able to bolt the, uh, the rifle in. So I might just have to go off a little bit back there and make it work. Yeah, and that'll work. I'll just do that for this one. This is kind of the test anyways. And see how it does. So basically I want it to be level, or should I say centered. And throw this over here. Just the way. I gotta see if this wrench will fit in here. Yeah, so that'll fit. I'll need an extension though, but that's okay. It's not something you'd normally be taking apart in the, at the match anyways. If you're having that bad of a day, you might wanna just head home. All right, so that's going to be where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and mark it in a few spots. And I can't see the spots now because the lighting sucks. 
Dang it. So, when all else fails, find your phone. Find your phone, find your phone. Where is my phone at? Do you guys know where my phone is? <laughs> Here we go. Right, I got a phone now. Let me line these two holes up. I got those two lined up. Now, where the hell's the pin? There it is. All right, so one more. Okay. I think that'll be good. I think that'll be good. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to use a tape measure that I brought. There it is. I'm just going to make sure these are centered up real quick. One and a half, one and a half. All right, we are good now. We are good. So I'm going to be losing some Lucas gun oil <laughs> as my Going slow and I have to burn my bit. Make sure it's oiled. Keep the bit cool. If any of you guys just showed up and wondering what the hell I'm doing, send Rick a text of his tax sad barricade style. Maybe he'll show it. Uh, I'm glad you said something because I got my light on still. Let's see what a Mr. Eagle Eye sent me. <laughs> there you go. Tax sack. Those tactical, those tactical moments. <laughs> Patent pending. That's right, Tim. Months from now, thousands of people are going to want one of these. They're not. They might. I don't know. If I had the tools, I'd do it a lot nicer. 
I just want to see if this is going to work though. I am, I'm in testing prototype mode. Alright. And one more. Uno mas, por favor. As they say in California. So, we're going to test this. Pretty sure it's not the right size. Nope. So, let me go get another bit. Get another bit. Get your bit on. All right, it's probably going to be this one. Oh, yeah, that's the one. That's money. That's the money one. 50 bucks, everybody. Cheap and easy. Come on, sucker. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Yeah, man, it's looking nice. All right, so now we got three holes. We got a mess over here. Anyways, it's a shop. It's supposed to look like a mess, right? All right, so we're going to flip this bad doggy up in here. I'm going to use a glove for the love. Remember, guys, use the glove for the love. That's all I got to say. That's what I got to say. All right, here we go. And they even line up, so we did something right. Almost amazing. Almost amazing. Okay, this is perfect what I want. This is almost exactly flush with this plate, guys. So this is perfect. El perfecto mundo. Now all I need is the screw. All right. All right. Where would I be? If I was a screw. All right, you guys, while we're doing this, what movie? I never saw a wild thing feel sorry for itself. As a bird will fall frozen dead from a bough without ever having felt sorry for itself. Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Silly, silly mofo. All right, here we go. So this is the uh, the three eighth post. So if you guys are gonna build one of these with the eighth inch plate, the three eighth post works in the MPA chasse the best. Let me go out here real quick. Watch as he screws it together and not able to take the bag out. I was uh, I was aware of that. The only thing that may happen until I do some more. Magic stuff, Mr. L and D Pro. Because things happen, right? Stuff happens. Um, is yeah, I could totally screw this up. At the end of the day, though, it doesn't really matter. It's just a damn uh what I'm having to do so you guys can see. Let me put one screw in first, just in case the madness happens here. Dun, dun, dun. I think that's the one I want to use. Nope. 
I'll use this one. Right. I think that's the one. No, that's the one. Wait, this is the one. No, wait, that's the one. This is going to be the one. It's going to be a little tight trying to get the chassis uh, in, but that's something that doesn't take place all the time. So I'm going to, I'd rather have it back farther than have it too far forward, but you still need enough room to actually make, actually make the, uh... all right, so that line, I could have drilled that a little bit better. So I will say that was a kind of a fail. Let me see. Let's see if it'll work. Before I get it all sad. I want to need to drill that one out a hair more. According to this, I don't. But I'm going to do it anyways. See, the one difference is, is honestly, I really don't care if the chassis gets scratched or anything, because at the end of the day, I'm just it's gonna end up getting scratched anyways. So I'm not really afraid of throwing a drill down there and see what kind of magic happens. Because <laughs> right now it's already got quite a few scratches on it. Especially after last night's tumble. See, these screws are going to work perfect because they're so flush. They're so fresh. They're so fresh. If I could just find that other one. All right. So now I can at least show you guys. So over yonder way, as they say. So I still got room here for the mag. Let me untape it. There we go. So there's plenty of room there. So that's looking okay. This is where things are going to get a little tricky. Though. You're going to have to run an extension down here to put to put this chassis back together with the action. All that means to me is I just run this extension though, like this, and I'll be good to go. So plenty of room to put that in. That's that's good. I'm actually excited that that's going to work better than I thought. Let me grab, uh, now this thing kind of looks ugly right now, and it's in the, it's in the beginning stages, but right here, you guys know what I'm building. Let me tighten this down a little bit, and I'll show you the reasons why I even built this damn thing. Let me catch up on the comments here. But this is one of the issues I was having. I get up to the stage. I throw this bag down. I put this on. And I really like loading into the bipod. I'm not into the bipod. I like doing that too. But loading into the barricade. And just this much. I don't know if you're going to see it. Just that much, see that little bit of movement, is enough to ruin your match. Enough to piss you off. Because this bag, when I slide up, is hitting just enough to tweak this, just, just barely enough, and it'll, it'll make it so you can't feed the next round. So basically you have to get on the, get on the piece of metal, we'll call it a piece of metal, and then I fire the, the piece of metal, and then I gotta almost bring it back a little bit, cycle the bolt, and then go back into loading the bipod. Um, I'm not good enough to like pay attention and try to do that every time. So this is gonna be the beginning of a fix. Now, this is fat, right? But it's much, much better, thinner than let's call this, let's call this the obstacle. So this is the obstacle. This is a horrible thing, but I throw I throw my bag on here, 
and I, I try to make it as flat as possible. But let's say it's really horrible. So I'm down, I'm like this. That's all I got. The problem with, let me get this one. The problem with a real bag rider, in my opinion, just my opinion, I'm still learning this game just like most of everybody. Is when I put it there, my rifle, it does this one. When I put it on my rifle, or should I say piece of metal, because that's what it is, I'll use this one. YouTube should be okay with this one. See how much of an angle I'm at? And now when I'm down on the rifle, I have to do this to get it to, uh, to go level. Now without it, I was able to kind of just like bring it in here and do that. So that's level. So a lot of the stages, I actually liked it to be more thin than this big fat thing here. Because this, this wouldn't work. Especially if you have a bag that's super full of sand. You can't, you can't make, you can't make this go like that without spending a whole crap ton of time on your stage. So that would kind of work. That would work probably, but that's a lot of work because basically you have to throw it down, you throw your rifle down, and you try to find levels. So let's see if this is going to work or make it. It's going to be better than this, I can guarantee that. I wish this was tight, though. And I wish the edges weren't super sharp, because I don't want to put a hole in this right now. So, let's see here. What we'll do is we'll use some... There it is. We'll use some 100 mile an hour tape. There we go. Now we're protected. I need a damn screwdriver though. I need a screwdriver. Stand by. Stand by, stand by. Shoot ready. Stand by. Beep. All right, that's good enough. All right, so let's see how this works. Come up, I got this, this funky stage here. I throw my bag down, which I think would work. I throw my piece of metal down. And I'm still pretty good. See how I can get almost level? I don't know if you guys like to run a thumb, like rest, but I've always shot where... I have my thumb, you don't want to touch in the barrel. So I always, I'm sitting here to manipulate it, to kind of pinch the bag. Here we go like this. Now I'm just hoping that this works out really slick. So basically when I'm coming up, you know, this was the, this was the barricade. I'm using, I'm using this as my pinch point, And then also using it as if I need to find it one way or the other. So it's kind of, that's kind of how I run it. So this seems to be working really well. And the reason why I don't have this where it's, where it's temporary, where I can click it on and off is because I don't want it this high off of my rifle. Like the one I showed earlier. It's basically this fat. In order to run one of these Area 419 uh, Arca Swiss clamps, you need like basically uh, almost a half an inch. So this is nice and flush. There's really no transition here. Um, now there will be times when I probably don't wish I had this on here, but I wish I didn't have this on here. I'm gonna speak English once in a while. Um, and that would be when, when I need to be on like a barrel, the top of a barrel where I normally slide, I would normally slide my bipod way back and then the grip would be on here and the whole thing would be on that little circle of a barrel. So that may be a time when I wouldn't or I can't. But now I'll just basically, I'll probably just run the bag. You know, you can run the bag flat like this. 
upside down, and then uh, get a good, nice level rifle. So now it's just a matter of some grinding, trimming it up a little bit, making it look a little more sexy, and uh, seeing how it works. So what do we got for comments out there? What do you think? What do you think? Now this could be a lot shorter, guys and gals, if you're out there. Problem is I want to be able to, even though if I'm going to run a 15 rounder, it's going to be ugly looking, but it's serving lots of purposes. It's serving having a fatter, stable base. And I could have brought this out farther. Would have been better for the bag, but the problem is, is I have less room to slide my tri my bipod back and forth. So I basically am more worried about being able to push up and not have the mag screwed up. I still got this whole surface here. You guys can see. You can see that it comes all the way from here, basically here to here. So it's it's encompassing pretty much 98% of the whole tater tot as far as the length here and here. So it should work a lot better than nothing. And it, hell, well, who knows? I'll even, I'll shoot it at the match, this next match. If you guys don't know, we're going to Pig River. Um, you got Ray, Ella, uh, myself, Bill Sweeney. I think Matt, Matt P is going as well. And it uh, should be a good time. But it's like a five hour drive. And uh, I'm going to give this a shot out there and see what happens. It could be a big pain in my ass. I don't see how it will be. But, uh, you know, you got to try it out in the field to see if it works. So that, that's going to be the match I want to try it out on. And then uh, some of the other things is I didn't do a complete 90 because I wanted it to be stronger and, and less likely to, uh, you know, just having a curve is a little bit stronger than a perfect 90 per se. But this, I mean, I can push way into this thing, and it's never gonna, it's never gonna hit the mag. I got it to touch right there, but I don't push, I don't push my rifle in that much. Uh, so you can make it touch, but uh, you're not gonna be pushing that hard. If you are, you're gonna knock the damn barricade over. What's the over under DW? Let's see, I'm going to make a bet this ends up in the trash can in three weeks, DW says. We shall see. This one might, DW, because I might have designed one even better. Um, I can tell you that right now I'm pretty excited. And it's not, I'm going to, I'm going to paint it, I'm going to shape it, do some things with it, but I honestly don't care what it looks like. I mean, hell, I run around with this on there. You guys can see that, my thumb rest, homemade thumb rest. And actually, one of the things I was planning on doing, now that I have, I'm not going to be using this, is I'm actually probably going to mount this right on there, because that's where I like, I would like to be able to push back down. You know what? Since we're here and we're having fun anyways, I'm going to take this apart right now and make it work. Hopefully it'll work. I don't see why I wouldn't. Bro, a song about it. Like to hear it? Here you go. Just kidding. I'm not going to sing for you. Hey, did you guys notice on Ray's last video? What's up, wow guy? He actually sang a song. Did you guys notice that? Round off the sharp edges a bit. Yeah, I will. That's going to be all trimming. Uh, I'll do that off camera because it's going to be a freaking noisy song again. It's going to be a bunch of grinding going on. So I'm going to take this. Let me get rid of this first. See, and this is on a... Where where might it be? Uh, this will work, actually. See that? QD mount. But this will go right here. And I think I can get one screw to fit in there. I need the end of this on here. I think I need this out here farther. Yep. 
Hmm. Yeah, I have to do some experimenting with that. We'll leave that for another project. So the next thing I got to do is take it all apart, grind the crud out of it, give it some good shape, some good body, some sex appeal, and then uh, round all these edges like somebody said. Wow, I think said. Yep, round off the sharp edges. This is going to be trimmed up in here a little bit just to kind of give it some look to it. And then uh, basically sand it, paint it, call it done. So I'm actually glad and surprised that uh, these, these screws worked out well. I'm happy that I can still get to the action screw and still have enough room and be back far enough or it's not like way up here. So I think that'll work. I'll keep you guys posted on that deal. See how it works. And I will try this the next match and see how it looks. So you can see how much wider it is. So here's, where's, uh, where is it at? Oh, right here. So these are called competition handrails. I bought these for the matrix. And this is set up for basically widening up your stance on your rifle. That other one, the 90 degree one, has one left on it. It does widen. Let me put this in here. It basically widens it that much down here. This is still even a little bit wider. So I kind of like that. So hair wider even still. And then I don't have to worry about attaching this. I still got my bag rider and now I got a barricade stop that it does, it doesn't, it looks like somebody made one of these in their shop. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. But uh I think functionality-wise, it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be beneficial to have. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's get over here. I'm done with this part for now. We'll get over here and do some BS and have some fun. I do see a new chassis. Yeah, there might be a new chassis in my uh, future. Mr. Hedges, Mr. Hedges, let me get over here so I can, you know what, I haven't had any tea in a while, I think, I think we're going to have to have a tea, not a pee, but a tea break, so if you guys thought that was interesting, or if you thought it was kind of silly, let me know, what's the name of that company that made the side mounted hand grip for the AR? I don't know, but don't buy one. <laughs> if you're talking about the one that was on uh, Ray's, on Ray's, uh, let's see if I can get over here so I can look at you guys. While I'm reading the comments, I'm going to need vodka after this. Shaggy Rifeman, all you need is pure leaf sweet tea. That's it. That's all you ever really need. In the future, Rick retires laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> That's right. Who knows, Lynn Holt? Maybe uh, tonight I'll get an order for uh, <laughs> zero. <laughs> Out loud, Josie Wales says, a mild sedative administered now to Rick. Might help him return to Earth. Let's see, let's see. About what you're doing here. If it works out, good for you. If it's all entertainment here that makes your show so fun. I appreciate it, DW. That's what it's about, having fun. Deburring is your friend. That's right. We got to deburr. We got to make that thing look good. Let's see. I need vodka now. Yeah, Alan needs vodka. What's the name of the company? We already did that one. Dry Martini Shaggy with an olive. <laughs> uh, great. Idea use. Flitz metal polish, that would look super sharp. Oh, damn. It would get it all polished out. No, I'm trying to hide that thing. I mean, that thing's, it, it, there's nothing pretty about it, honestly. But I don't, 
at the end of the day, if it works, I honestly don't care. I would TIG weld it. Yeah, that, see, that would be a cool thing, too. I wish I could get it where there's a there's a hole that goes down so you can actually – so basically it's like a finger like this. So on the like for two inches, or you can actually slide – the bipod farther down, but you still have the side, um, you know, support. You guys thought I was going to give you the finger, didn't you? Polish that thing you made to a full mirror shine. I'm going to send it to Shaggy Rifle. He can do that. Shaggy, how's the roof? Lipton Fresh Brew here. Hey, just so you guys know, Lynn, um, you can see. Hold on, I got zoomed out. You can see that there is a bag in there. I've been making some homebrew last uh, three batches. The only problem is, is these are the big bags. So when you slide that bad dog in there after you already put the sugar in there, that is not coming out unless you rip it. And it is a damn mess. Uh, let's see. Can I order one for Remington 870? <laughs> let's see. Shaggy, any word on the B14R barrel action? Let's see here. Looks like we're caught up. My water tastes better. Changed my mind. Yeah, you know what? I'm running mine through the uh, Zero water purifier just because I thought it'd be fun to try out, see if I could get it to Zero because I had the Brita one before. And uh, at this house, the water is not great. It's very got a lot of minerals in it. You know, like if you uh, if you haven't used the bathroom in a while, like the sedatives will make like kind of a brown uh, brownish. No, I got I got to grab the microphone so you guys can hear me. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of minerals in the water over here. The old house had uh, much better pure water, but it is what it is. But I am on a well, so that makes it kind of nice. I don't have to worry about not having water as long as there's water. And in North Carolina, you don't have to worry about water because there's a stream over there, or I should say a river. Let's see. Send me that plate. I'll polish it for you. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd want it polished. I'm, I think I'm just going to paint it black. I think it's just going to be black. I'm headed over to check out that stock Thursday. Yeah, let me know, Dick. Uh, appreciate it. We're uh, talking about a new stock that's out. It's been out for a while. It's uh, called a Vision. It's uh, Norwegian, I believe. What am I bleeding right here? Dang, work. See this? This whole uh, this is a dangerous job making uh, making these things. We've been bitten. We've been getting super busy at work lately, building lots and lots of stuff, trying to get ready for two shows, one in Vegas and one, well, it's actually the NRA convention, 150 year. I know there's a lot of stuff going on with the NRA. Um, you know, the, I like the GOA better, Guns of America, but uh, NRAs, they're the big dog. They're, they got 150 years, which is really cool. So that's pretty amazing, but they got a uh, the 150 year convention this year. So whether you agree with it, don't like it, or whatever, I'm going there for work for showing off the uh, suppressors. So um, it's a work deal, and it'll be it'll be fun. Probably see some people I haven't seen in a long. Supposed to be here on Friday. So far, I'm into the build for 45 bucks. Much better than 150 for uh, yeah the store box. Diet Coke tastes like crap before COVID. If anything, COVID will make it taste better. I don't Diet Coke. I don't know. Mr. Uh, Raymundo sure likes the Diet Coke. I can't stand anything. It actually messes up my stomach. The uh, Whatever they use in there and all those diet drinks, I instantly know that it has it in there. What's up, Mario? Um, so it's like my stomach says, nope. 
How's the fly fishing been going? Uh, lately, uh, we haven't gone. I almost went today after work. And then I'm like, ah, I need to go by Lowe's and figure out my rifle. So I'm a little bit butt hurt, a little bit sad that my ammo is not shooting as good as it could. Um, I've tried a few different lots now, and the lots that I had a chance to test out were much better than the ammo that I had. So I'm, uh, I'm down to the last, I don't know, 2,500 or so. So that'll go pretty quick, but I'm going to need to find a better lot. And another thing I'm working on is getting a barrel built for the 360 and try that out as well. So once that happens, I'm probably going to send in my, my 360 with the custom barrel and find another lot that works find another lot because i didn't go and send my rifle in i really felt like when i went from cci standard velocity to the ammo the the center x it was a huge drastic difference i mean magical difference i'm like man this thing shoots freaking tight groups but after watching like pursuit of accuracy and some of the other channels and watching chris simmons just freaking stack nickels or dimes at freaking like 300 yards. I'm like, my rifle is not even close to that. So it's kind of been bumming me out. Now I'm questioning some of my shots. It's like, did I screw up or did the ammo screw up? More than likely it was me. I mean, just to tell you, but I hate having that in the back of my head. Um, it does nothing but ruin my game when it comes to like, well, should I hold a little bit over here? Cause the last one did the stupid, some weird funky thing that it normally wouldn't do you know so then you got all this stuff playing in the back of your head while you're trying to shoot a stage <laughs> it's just like just shoot the stage like I, you can't go you can't go back and forth on this thing because all you're doing is you just basically pulling your damn hair out um so that was that's some of the things that has been driving me nuts the last couple of weeks you guys probably know you've seen it we talked a little bit about it but um i'm just I just feel like I'm going backwards. I'm not shooting as – I don't feel like I'm shooting as good as I was. And a lot of it is we haven't been shooting as much. But some of it's just stupid, mental error, you know. And that's that's going to happen. I understand that. And uh, But I'm like, dang. You know, I did pretty crappy at the finale. I think I got like mid-place, mid-pack. And for me, I was like, I was not happy about that. So I went Sunday, shot that Sunday, and hell, I was mid-pack again. I'm like, what in the hell? And I don't mind being mid-pack. We're shooting against, yeah, I do. I mind being mid-pack. Uh, we're shooting against some really damn good shooters. I mean, you know, the best of the best, um, at least some of them. And But I'm like, man, I should have done better, you know. Even if they beat you. It was just fine, it's, but I'm like, I was like way down there. I'm like, this is not fun. Your trouble started when you got the 360, X-Ring says. The trouble started when I got the 360. Yeah, I got to agree with some of that. I I, uh, I truly love the action of the 360, though, so I'm going to try to make it work. So new barrel and barricade stop now. Cause I can't, I can't tune that damn uh, mag, the mag release to work for both things. So, absolutely, he says. Um, more trouble. Keep your eyes checked. That could be some of it. I know my eyes are not as good as they used to be. I got to wear readers now. Um, especially lately, we've been doing a lot of like tiny screw kind of stuff. Today was kind of nice because the screws are bigger, so I can actually see and not have to wear my glasses. So I was a little excited about that. He won't listen. What am I supposed to be listening to? You're shooting with some of the best you're learning. Carry on. Yeah, it helps to make sure that the bullets enter the rifle and you're closer to perfect as not crooked. Um, there's a Remex in your future. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Ray said it on his channel. He got a Remex from uh, the the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kenny Eagle Eye. 
And uh, that thing's shooting really, really good. It's shooting uh, Ely better than it is the uh, La Pua. But um, I just want to shoot damn good groups. And right now, I, I have to say a lot of it is the ammo. I mean, I can print some really good groups usually, but I want to know what I wasn't listening to, Mr. X-Ring. I, I really try to listen, especially from Mr. X-Ring. He's, uh, he's been a great supporter of helping me learn the game of shooting a rifle. Hell, everything. Shooting the pistol and everything else. Not shooting as good story of my life, Rick. Let's see. No, he likes the new that new barricade stuff. Or the Bagara. And he um, actually ordered some Bagara parts for a, a friend of ours in Australia because they won't send it to Australia, I guess. So I ordered six. Actually, the uh, plus twos for the mag in, uh, from AJ's, but I have heard. I don't know if he wants to say or not, but... Um, He's been having issues with those, so I don't know if those guys are going to be super excited when they show up or not. Barrel isn't going to solve your issue. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I think I think the barrel's fine because Matt's rifle's shooting great. Um, I think it's the ammo for sure, but I figure why not have some fun, maybe get a little more weight out front. Go back to your old rifle and send 360 into Lapua and at least take one problem out of the equation. Oh, well said, Greg, actually. Um, I truly do love that 360, though. Um, the action on it is is damn amazing. But you know what? You guys are completely right. Um, maybe that's what I needed to hear. I just like shooting that damn 360. Um, <laughs> spot on. Must say, I must say, they say store bought ammo should be checked more often now because how fast they're pumping the stuff out. I have heard that, DW. I have heard that certain uh, manufacturers are not making the most, uh, the best that they can, per se. But you are shooting like shit with it. Yeah, I don't think it's the right. Uh, I think it's the ammo. <clears throat> I think it's the ammo. I don't know. Is it the rifle or is it the barrel or is it? So here's one of the things. <clears throat> one of the things. So I sent Kenny a picture. So I was sitting there watching Ray smack down some stupid freaking amazing uh, shots. And here's what I saw. I think some of this was from a few days prior. We were doing some testing. And you can see, maybe if I can, hold on, I got to zoom out. You can see that there, this is inside of the action. You can see those little particles of lead. There's a couple pieces of brass. <laughs> see, it's not coming out very good for you guys to see. So basically, you got the... Uh, the barrel's over here, <laughs> um, but you can see deposits. Looks so much better on my phone than it does to you guys. And then you can see that here's a better picture. So this was some of the concerns, and this might this is the reason why I was thinking about. So in here you can see like that's copper or brass. There's a couple of pieces. That's a piece of brass. And you can see a big shaving right along here. Right? What the hell? I know that's right because he has a special ringtone. Oh, here we go. So this was... He's sending me a picture of a group. I have no idea what this is. This is a 0.41 MOA. I'm assuming that's. 
I've seen you shoot way better than that, Ray. I don't know what this is. That's a point four. That may be at a hundred yards, actually. Doesn't say on here. Maybe he'll answer that. But I know at 50, that thing's just one bug hole. One that that is at a hundred. Okay, so yeah. See, that's pretty decent. My and I think I talked about this one day. My my rifle. And it could be as I'm dragging, maybe I'm dragging some lead off, screwing up my screwing up something. Maybe the mag's not seated in there perfect, and I'm kind of just shaving that that barrel and making worse groups. But at a hundred yards, it's basically uh, I want to say like a baseball, so like that big. Now I shot a different lot, and Ray can back me up on this. He was there, but the the lot shrunk. Now it wasn't as impressive as that. It was very, it was quite close to that, but it was about the size of a, I don't know, a golf ball. So basically, a baseball to a golf ball, um, and that was the difference. And that was just lots of ammo. So I was like, it was it was much better. So then I'm like, well, I'm sure I'm pulling shots. I'm sure I'm screwing up. But at the end of the day, I'm going, man, is a, did I miss? Out of 100 shots, let's say it was 100 shots, and let's say I got, I don't know, let's say, you know, I had a crappy day. Let's say I shot, I don't know, 68 of them. Um, out of the 68, you know, the ones that I missed, how many of those were, say, maybe ammo related? Maybe I was just off a few inches because of the lot of ammo, you know, what was that number? What would that number be? Well, the only way to figure that out in my mind is to shoot a different lot of ammo, but it is what it is. Mr. Ramsey country's in the house. Welcome, Mr. Ramsey. I'm sub 70 days and waiting for my 360. November 1st is my target date. Got it. Well, guy, I send you a pick. I send you pick. Oh, here we go. What's this? This was, uh, did he say, what was this picture of, right? Sent you a new one from 50. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is 50 yards. It's 0.35 MOA at 50 yards. So that's just a stupid picture. Hopefully you can see that. Let me focus. Yeah. That. Let me bring it over a little bit. So a nice group. So I'm uh I guess I was getting I was getting butt hurt. I'm like, why isn't my rifle shooting like this? Like this is bull crap. I'm getting a little pissy right now. Why doesn't my stuff work? The lot you have doesn't work well in the 360. Yeah, because it shot a lot better in the 90. But then we did those tests, Ray, and we printed groups. And we printed groups at only 50, though, I think. And the 360 and the 90, they shot the same, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it was all in my head. <laughs> um, Ramsey Country, if you just showed up, we just got done building a barricade slash bag rider uh a home ghetto worked uh piece for my for my voodoo so you can see that it still needs to be trimmed you can see the uh or i'm going to trim it up and stuff but yeah that was kind of what this show has been about but, uh, lately, the last 10 minutes has been me whining because my stuff doesn't shoot well enough. But, but other than that, a lot you have doesn't work well. I got to admit, I think x rings always right. He really is. You should be getting all of them in a half dot at 100. If not, will you have a tough time keeping up with the top boys? Tyler, I, I got to agree. I am not putting you in a, in a half inch dot at 100. <laughs> Unless there's a whole bunch of half-inch dots within a baseball size, 
I could not keep him within that. Not, not with that rifle right now. Not with this lot of ammo. And this is, yeah, they would be out of, it'd be out of here. You know, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching, and a huge shout out to a good buddy of ours out there, Pursuit of Accuracy. The Josh with his CZ has been tack driving, splitting cards at 150 yards or some crazy crap. And uh, that thing is just shooting amazing. So he's he's definitely got it figured out. I know this would be a pain, but clean your action and go out and single feed the bullets in the barrel. And maybe you can see if the, it's a feed issue or operator error. Yeah, I was actually talking to Kenny the other, was it last night, two nights ago? Um, actually running the bolt. Um and just ejecting in the round, seeing what's happening. I actually have them. You won't be able to see any of it. But uh, there really was no scrapes, no. So, like, all that stuff you saw in those pictures I, I showed you guys with the uh, little pieces of, of lead deposit and that kind of stuff, um, that's obviously taking place. Uh, but that could be, you know, a few pinched rounds in between, like, 250 rounds of shooting. So maybe it's. That's not the big deal. I don't know. I think I'm just making excuses for myself now. I don't know. You're right, Rick. I ain't going to cut it. Um, yeah, it's not. He is scraping it. He is scraping everything but the action. New barrel, new chassis, new bag rider, not fixing the Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait for that barrel, and then I'm going to send that 360 in. <laughs> That's not going to fix it either. No. Nope. Man, you guys, it's like going to AA meeting over here. You guys are just helping me out. It's like, you can't do this. You, that's not going to help. <laughs> My name is Rick, and I'm a uh, shooting anonymous. It's been, it's been one day, maybe two. What's today? Monday. It's been one day since I shot. Maybe sending in the action barrel to lap for fifty bucks might be a good idea. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's pursuit of accuracy. There he is. We were just talking great things about you, buddy. Talking about how damn good that CZ shoots. Tyler Orth, you going with a one and nine? Ah, uh, that, that stuff I can't, I can't give up. I don't know exactly what I'm going with yet, so we'll see. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just can't buy that expensive ammo that Josh buys. I just can't do it. Wrong brand of sweet tea. That that could be it. That could be it. This is a customized though. This is not pure leaf in here. Yeah, you have to go back, Josh. I actually said some nice stuff about you. I'm just glad you didn't get a chance to hear it. Howdy, gals and gals, guys and gals and guys. What's up, 80 Baja? Hopefully you're doing well. The um. Look at this mess behind me. Jeez. We got a mess going. But yeah, that was the that was the, what time is it? Hell, it's 8 30. It's time for Ray to start a chat. You're trying to build and fix a rimfire based on one entire lot of Lapua. It's not going to fix anything. You're trying to build and fix a rimfire based on one entire lot of amp Lapua. Yeah, I gotta agree. Um, some of it was, I don't know, I didn't like the mag issues. So hopefully that helps. Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I definitely need to buy some different lots of ammo and try them out. There's one that's really great. 
There was two actually. One Matt uses and the one uh, Chris uh, Chris Beck uses. Those both shot three times better than than the stuff I'm shooting right now, which is still decent to good ammo. It's just that rifle, like you guys have been saying, doesn't doesn't like it. I agree with everyone here. Get to testing ammo. Stop trying to fix a rifle you haven't actually ammo tested. Auto erotic. <laughs> I don't know. What's up, Cal Pogi? Riding the wave. Damn. It's been a while. You're right. The fish held his breath too long. Problem is, is Lapua. No. Uh, Ely only has a 50 yard testing thing, which isn't a bad deal, but I think it's. I had talked to Josh, which is uh, Pursuit of Accuracy. And, uh, it's almost like if you can find some lots that may work. Let me restate that. The Remex I have hates the Pua. Yeah. That one does. I don't know about the other ones, but that one sure does. It sure does. How long have I been yapping for? Oh, my goodness. Almost two hours. Two hours of yapping this. We got Frank Fur out there. You're lucky to have yours. I ordered mine in May. Talked to them today, and they said another four to six weeks. I hope it shoots good when it gets here. Thomas Teeks out there. Try replacing your little J-hook extractor. You can chip in on short strokes. Look at it. Huh. I don't have the It's down there. So I can blame the rifle. So I can't blame the rifle. Joe Moore, good evening. Ray, you're plenty harsh there. Try to play some little jam. Pulverizer, I just got the testing results from the food back today. Worth it. Nice, how did it go? Did you get your rifle back yet? It's probably still on its way. Joe Moore. Ray, you're pretty harsh there. <laughs> it really looks like it's produces some excellent groups. That's where I'll be sending my rifle when I'm, I'm out of ammo. Yeah, there's a there's a person that's been on here before. Shoots very well and uh, is sponsored by um, <laughs> said ammo, but actually has been shooting something else because it actually shoots better. So let's see. He's out of zapper range. Call your reps and tell them no on HB 4953. Uh, the only gun I have that likes Ely is a 28-year-old and shoots. I'll have the rifle on Wednesday, just in time for the King of Point 28 Mile. Point 28. I don't know what that is, Pulverizer. Sounds like fun. The King of the Point 28. So that's got to be, what is that, 500 yards? Six? Let's see, three tenths. Oh, Tyler Orr's going to that, too. That's cool. All right. Any other uh, any other things I should be aware of before I wrap up tonight's chat? But Riding the Wave does have a great call your reps. I know we got some stuff going down in North Carolina when it comes to uh, the whole pistol permit thing. Anyone in Tampa, friend of mine, is running for Congress, former Green Beret. It will protect your gun rights and fight for a better future for your family. Good to know. Wish him luck. Let's see here. TCS also gets here. Hey, I'm looking forward to shooting this Pig River match. Should be fun next Saturday. I've not been to this place before. And I believe it's like five hours away. It's in Virginia. 
and it uh, should be a good time. Heard nothing but great things about this place, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it'll be a good time for sure, so can't wait for that to happen. We need more gun rights. Activism talk on here. Yeah, DW. There's better channels that have a lot more information than I do, though. I try to stay in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Listen to... Uh, ah, hell, I can't even think right now. But there's quite a few channels that do way better than I would ever do. My Voodoo 360 is amazing. SKR, let's see, raffle match, not as good as other greasy SKs. Oh, good to know. The, I actually have some SK to try out. The problem is, is Chris Beck, when he was down, he sent, he gave me a, a like three different lots of different stuff. SK something, a couple of those, and then some uh, Cinerex. And that Cinerex shot amazing. Problem is, any of that crap, I don't think I can even order anymore. You know what I mean? It's not new enough. Not well, maybe maybe the the Pua, but I don't believe it's uh, new enough where I could actually buy that lot unless somebody already had it. Let's see, my video. Are you going to shoot the PRS Pro Am at K and M? Nah, not that I'm aware of. The only Pro Am we're doing is the Microtech Pro Am. It's a three gun match, so. Maybe start a GOA fund temperature gauge in the background to donate over months of shows. Oh, like the thing is like we make some money, you know, like the donation money goes up or something. GOA is pretty cool. I've had a chance to meet quite a few of those guys at different things like uh, the Iraq Veteran 8888, the... Uh, the... Um, the hell's it called? Da, 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 da. It was the uh, Palmetto State Armory something. I can't remember what it was called. I believe they were out there as well. But, yeah, they're doing some great stuff, especially for being so much smaller than the, the NRA. Um, if they had the power of the NRA and the uh, how they, they actually fight for a lot more rights and do a lot more stuff than uh, the NRA does, those guys, I mean, are rocking and rolling. The pulverized, the gap grind is a great match, Joe Moore says. Hell yeah. All right. That's probably it. I'm going to call Ray and tell him I'm going to throw the 360 in the trash. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, now I need to find a lot of ammo. I mean a lot of ammo, so I can do a lot of practicing. Castro 5700 Elite is dialed in and adjusted with the Magneto Speed V3 at 5075 and Last Saturday, I swung the Kestrel around for environmentals, and it is a spot on for 6585. It's sorcery. It's like it's like voodoo magic stuff. Cow pokey. Especially if you got it working great. It's, it's freaking magic. It is magic. All right. Any other madness before we get out of here? Any other madness? And if you live in Georgia, Gun Owners Association. Oh, Georgia Gun Owners. All right. Good to know, DW. Yeah, Gun Owners of America... They, uh, there's some good guys on there, good guys and gals, good lawyers and all that stuff fighting for our Second Amendment rights. All right, all right. I think I'm going to get out of here. I got uh, I got to grind away at this thing, try to make it look halfway decent instead of uh, <laughs> just some damn – look like I cut a piece of uh, – uh, <laughs> I can't even think of what the word is – the thing that keeps people from, uh, you know, driving off the cliff. What the hell is that stuff called? My brain's not working. What up, Drew Bradley? Uh, rail? Something rail. I cannot remember. I know you guys know. 
So let me know in the comments. I plan to get there about the same time. Drive safely. Guardrail. Thank you. Yeah. Basically, it looks like I made a piece of guardrail and put it on my on my rifle. But you know what? Well, GOA has a YouTube channel. I did not know that. Have a great evening planning. Be at my first Mars match. 5th of September. That's awesome. 45 auto. You're coming in late, my man. Which normally, I did this as a like a workshop thing. We were building stuff. And uh, hell, it ended up jumping into the time that I would normally do a chat. So I'm going to call it the chat for the night and uh, maybe get to bed early. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night or day, depending on where you're at. And uh, we will see you soon. Take care. And if you get a chance, take someone to the shooting range.